What's going on guys? Today I wanna to talk about product research. So how to do product research as a beginner using Helium 10. So I'm gonna go through all the tools you can use with Helium 10 to do product research. That way you can go ahead and get this process started, understand what you're looking at and how to like leverage a product research software to sort through millions and millions of products on Amazon. Because if you just do this without a software, you're putting yourself at a disadvantage from the fact that you just cannot you know, physically sort through all those products on your own. So I'm gonna dig into my screen here, show you exactly what these tools are. That way you can get started and start this whole journey of doing Amazon FBA. Okay, so hopping in my screen here, you can see we're on Helium 10. So if you don't know what Helium 10 is, it's a product research software. There's Jungle Scout, Viral Launch, Helium 10. Helium 10 is the one I'm gonna be using here today. Uh, it is the one I trust right now the most. Uh, if you need this, there'll be a link down in the description. Uh, with this, we can get 20% off for the first six months you use this or 10% every month. If you are gonna get this, make sure you get a discount code, okay? Uh, that way you can save some money while you first start this process. Uh, in today's video, I'm gonna go through Black Box. So Amazon product research software, I'm gonna show you how to use this, how this works. If you don't know how this works, this is a great video for you just to kind of get the basics down and understand what the heck's going on uh, in this very complicated business, especially in the beginning, right? There's just a lot of moving parts. I'm also gonna talk about some of my other favorite tools like Magnet, Cerebro here, uh, and go through uh, some product research on Amazon as well. So the first thing you need to do when you sign up for Helium 10, uh, first of all, I, I recommend just getting the Platinum plan at first. Don't get the Diamond. Uh, do it month to month too. You don't need to get the Platinum annual right now. No need to spend $900 your first year. Just get it the first month. Make sure you like it. Make sure you're continuing on uh, doing product research and everything like that. Obviously, you know product research tools are, are great here, but you can also use this for keyword research, listing optimization, and a bunch of maintenance stuff uh, for your Amazon business. I use it every single day uh, I sell on Amazon FBA, okay? Uh, so first, what you're gonna do once you get Helium 10, Go to the Chrome extension store, okay? So you're gonna grab this. I'm gonna show you exactly what this looks like, but go to the Chrome extension store. If you don't have Chrome yet, get Google Chrome, join the 21st century, <laughs> get off your Firefox browser uh, and get into Helium 10 here. Uh, just kidding, those browsers are sure fine, but Google Chrome is where you wanna be. Uh, anyways, once you get this going, you'll have this Chrome extension right up here where this will go ahead and let you browse through a bunch of marketplaces using Helium 10 and on real time, uh, figure out what's going on on Amazon, which I'm gonna show you how to do uh, here very soon. So first going back to Helium 10, I wanna talk about black box. So in app here, this is what you're gonna to use to get the product research ball rolling, okay? So black box, what this does, using all this criteria here, don't worry, uh, at first it looks like a lot, but really it, it's not that much what you get used to it. A lot of this stuff is just kind of filler too. And you know, you don't really need it unless you're like, you know, exactly what you're looking for here. Uh, but this is what's gonna sort through all of Amazon's products essentially define, you know, ideal products or products that are in our zone uh, to make sure that we're doing well on Amazon as in like, you know, we're not finding a product that's too saturated, you know, not to have enough demand, not doing enough sales, everything like that, right? Uh, so we go right down here uh, to black box. This is gonna go sort through products for us, okay? We also sort through keywords, competitors, niche, and product targeting. I'm gonna walk you through a few of the basic ones here today. But first, I'm just gonna walk you through uh, everything kind of going on here. So we go black box products, uh, we see marketplace right here. So uh, amazon.com, .ca, .mexico, all the marketplaces. We're gonna do a .com, so this is the American marketplace. This is where I suggest most people start uh, when they're first doing Amazon. A uh, product category, so th there are filter presets here. I don't use these. You can experiment with these. This is all one big experimentation. Get creative with your product research, but I personally don't use those. Category and subcategory, okay? So we're gonna go through here and figure out what categories we wanna sell on Amazon here. I like arts, crafts, and sewing here. Uh, I do like some baby products, but they, they come with a little bit more stipulation as in far as being able to sell those, right? Uh, going down here, let's keep going down. Home and kitchen's a good one. Industrial scientific, kitchen and dining. Some very big categories there. Office products, patio, lawn and garden. Uh, pet supplies, uh, tools and home improvement. Uh, I avoid a lot of these like toys and games. They're very trendy. Video games, obviously very hard to sell. Sports and outdoors, a lot of clothing here, but this is something you could toggle on and off. Software, I obviously don't know much about that. Musical instruments, if you got some history there, be a good one to go through. So don't take these categories, just like the be all end all, okay? Do your own self-experimentation here. Uh, you know, clothing, shoes, and jewelry. I don't like this so much because there's high return rates uh, and you have to have carry uh, a ton of inventory because you need small, large, medium, and the different designs, everything like that, right? Uh, grocery and gourmet food is a great niche to get into, but it's just really hard to source, especially if it's your first product, okay? Uh, so going down here, we see numbers of seller. I don't care about this. Price, okay, so I wanna go 13 to, let's say 55 here. So I like this 13 to somewhere around the 60, $70 range. We keep getting higher and higher. Obviously the cost of goods, the inventory is gonna cost a lot more. So the fact they're gonna be more complex products, more premium products, and so your bill's gonna get really, really high really quickly. We wanna go a lower price here, 
just for the fact of, I'm not sure why that auto filled like that. That was kind of weird. But anyways, we don't want to go too low here because Amazon's fixed fees will kind of eat into our margin there. Price change, I don't mess around with this too much. Review count, so this is another big one here. Uh, so if we go to 15 to, let's say, about 450 here, this gets products within 15 to 450 reviews. As you know, reviews are kind of the currency on Amazon. So we don't want to compete with products that have 10,000 reviews or 15,000 reviews or 5,000 reviews. We want to start low and work our way up. Okay, review rating, you can go uh, minimum here. You could do, you know, zero to, you know, 4.2. This makes sure that you just find products that are four stars and lower. That way you can always improve on these products. A uh, brand search, you can do this if you want, but I don't mess with that because again, we're doing private label for most products. And so we just want to make sure we, we find anything, right? We don't care about the brand so much here. Uh, if we get deep into searches, obviously we can uh, toggle with that. Monthly revenue, let's go, um, let's see here. Let's go 4,000 to 16,000. So again, we don't want to go too high competition because you'll get eaten alive, big marketing budgets up there. We want to find somewhere where we can make a good chunk of money, uh, but it's not too competitive, especially for your first product for this, the fact of you don't want to be competing with Goliaths up there, right? That know what they're doing while you're just learning. Okay. Best sellers rank. I don't mess with this too much, but there are ways to kind of toggle this uh, and everything like that. I'll show you a little bit, uh, most likely with this, uh, with the Chrome extension. Uh, once we get deeper onto Amazon monthly sales units, I don't really care about this because 4,000 to 16,000 in this price range will put me a constraint right here, right? Just for the fact of, if you just do the math, you know, 55 divided by 16,000 is going to have the units right there. Uh, 12,000 to divided by 16,000 is going to have the max units right there. So it's, it really doesn't matter when you have these two dialed in, uh, but you can mess with this if you want. Um, otherwise I don't. Shipping size is important. The fact of we don't want something too big for the fact of shipping costs are going to be through the roof uh, and also FBA fees. So the, the fulfillment fees that Amazon charges to ship the product to the customer is going to be a lot as well as storage fees. So we want small standard size, large standard size, even small oversized. These are getting you know into washing machines, pools, things like that. We don't want to really mess with. You can mess with weight too here uh, as well. But yeah, best sales month. Just a little tip here. You can do mess with seasonal products. If you want to get involved in seasonal products, you want to do something that does really well. Uh, for Christmas or July 4th, whatever it may be, you can mess around to figure out what products are selling best in what months. Uh, hopefully you guys could see that. I know it's a little harder to see, just the fact my, my head's in the way, but all good there. Fulfillment, I don't mess with this because I'm not afraid to compete with anything. If it's FBM, that's a plus because FBM, what that is, is fulfilled by a merchant. So you're actually shipping that yourself. Well, FBA is, yeah, you send it to Amazon's warehouse. This is where I want you to be just because this is where it gets hands off and you can scale the business. Uh, it's gonna be shipped to the customer. Amazon means it's an Amazon product. I don't care. Like none of this stuff really tells me that if it's going to be a good or bad product. So I want to keep all my options open there. Uh, sales to review ratio. Uh, I don't really want to mess with this my first go around, but could do that later. Number of images, title, keywords. Again, I don't mess with this. Then we go down here and hit this little search button. We see it audio populated everything that we were searching for. It has searched all of Amazon for the products we're looking for. We, so we see monthly revenue right here. This one's doing 8,000 a month, 6,000 a month, 4,000 a month. You can see the photo of the product right here, uh, which is great to kind of get an idea of what it's going on. So we see a chew toy here for a dog. So what we can do is just click this button and it's going to open it up on Amazon for us. So you can see what's going on here, obviously. Cool thing about this x-ray tool is obviously we can see the sales on this page right here. If we open this up, but we also, if you just go, I like to always go through um, all departments here and I put in, you know, dog toys. I will search that right here and we could see, open this up Helium 10 X-ray. So that's the tool you can actually use on Amazon to figure out what sales are, reviews, everything like that. So once that's done loading, it takes a little bit, obviously, Amazon's a very big place. Uh, once that's open up here, we can see, you know, these top products doing 215,000, 123,000, 114,000. Uh, some put not available. I'm not sure what that is to be exactly sure with you. Uh, they go through like formulas based on there. So there's gonna be some, a little bit of gaps. It's, it's gonna happen with software and when there's millions and millions of products, everything like that. So you just gotta work with the data you do have here. But we can see here 171,000. Uh, what these SPs mean over here, so you see SP, that means sponsored. So people are paying for these to put up here. So we see sponsored here, sponsored here, sponsored here. What I actually care about is the organic listings. So the first listings that aren't sponsored because that means Amazon knows that they're the best products. They sell the most for this keyword and everything like that where these are being paid to be here. So it's kind of like, it's a little biased, right? And it's reviews. Obviously, once you start selling a product, you're gonna wanna learn about this because it's a great way to get your first traffic, everything like that. But we can see what's going on here with the Chrome extension. We can click into products like this right here, right? And we can, you know, obviously pull that up just for this product here. Uh, see the variations, the different, you know, types of toys. Uh, we can go down here and we can even see like all-time charts 
of BSR, which is best selling rank. Again, don't get too deep into this. There's there's a lot going on. I know that I got plenty of other videos about BSR, everything on my channel. So if you want to go deeper on that, I just want to kind of give you the basics. So you can just start the process, right? If you have to learn hours and hours of, of content, just to kind of figure out what's going on, then it's going to be harder to get, get going, right? So uh, we see here that over time, profitability calculator. So we can do a little bit of uh, calculations based on what Amazon's fees are, what the product costs, everything like that. Uh, shipping and we could see you know what our potential profits could be right here so like four dollars per unit so obviously that's really cool to be on there obviously we just keep going keep going this product idea after product idea and this takes a while guys this takes a little bit to get going especially when you're first starting just come back every day create a list of products you kind of like uh, and, and keep going down the rabbit hole there so keywords i want to talk about this keywords tab here so we can actually search by long tail keywords which is one of my favorite ways to do product research so we see here search volume. What this means is that SVA number of searches from the previous 30 days. So we're finding keywords. So people what type it in to Amazon. So if I go back up here, dog toys is a keyword. Okay. So we can use this tool black box in the keyword selection to figure out other keywords that people are searching on Amazon for us potentially to look into. Okay. So pretty much very similar here. Just the fact that we get to type in a, a good search volume. So for me, this is around 500 to let's say, 4,000, so 4,000 searches per month to 500 searches per month. Uh, revenue is going to be similar. So 4,000 uh, to 16,000 here. Okay, price is going to be very similar too here. So I uh, see a lot of common themes of, of what's going on here. Review count 15 to 450 here. I can type that in and then review rating is going to be zero to 4.2 again. Uh, word count is actually pretty important here. So word count, we want to make sure we find long tail keywords, right? We don't want to be uh, finding products that are like chair or toy or anything like that. So we want to have a word count minimum. So at minimum, there's gonna be at least 30 words in this phrase. And the further out we go with these keywords, the more niche it gets. And that's where you want to be in the beginning. You want to be in a little niche of your own, little sub niche where you can wiggle your way in and get a few sales and, and make your earnings there and slowly expand to bigger niches there. So word count minimum three right here. Same thing with categories here. So arts, crafts, sewing, baby, Okay, let's go. A lot of times I, I switch this up to as I go just to be creative. Office products, patio, lawn, garden, pet supplies, uh, tools and home improvement. So that's good there. Then we go over to shipping size, same thing here. Okay, and then I'm gonna go down here, hit search. So when you see it search, you get all these different keywords, right? So keywords on Amazon, so kids pottery wheel. So you go through here, just like you do the products and you figure out like what sticks out to you. Obviously there's gonna be a lot of seasonal stuff that's gonna, it's gonna happen with something coming up. But the first one that sticks out to me is kids pottery wheel right here. So we can go over here, click view on Amazon, and then it brings up that whole niche in general. That's why I like this, because you're gonna find a lot more ideas and figure out what's going on here. So we see products with 1700 reviews, 693, 1872. Uh, so the review thing just really takes an average of what's going on. And then we could go right here to Helium 10, hit X-ray, and then bring up everybody's product sales. So we go down here, we see 52,000, 84,000, 10,000, 12,000. Uh, so we see quite a few sales here. This is actually pretty, pretty high in demand, as in like a little bit more competitive than I like to start. But maybe there's something down here that they're not doing that we can niche down even further. That's just more research for another day and us going through listings, really checking reviews, seeing what's seeing what's going on. If there's any ways to prove it, like this is 4.1 out of stars. So like, what's wrong with this, right? So we go to the one star reviews right here and we start reading these. The good, the bad, the ugly, you know, it was fun for her, good beginner item. The torque on the table is a little weak. Okay, so it's a weak. Too much pressure will stop the spin. Don't trust the sellers because clearly they sold me a used item since the clay has been open and half was gone. Okay, so people aren't happy. Wheel intermittently turns here. Uh, so again, things we can improve in this product to make it better. Uh, and also just getting to know the customer a little bit more uh, as well is super helpful. So getting to understand like, what are these people looking for? Is something missing here? Like, can we niche down even further? Okay, so that's just another little avenue you can go down. And to go even further into that, so say we take this kid's pottery wheel, like you're telling me, Cameron, like I wanna niche down. Great, but like, how do I figure that out? Well, one, you can bring this up, obviously if the Chrome extension, this will pop up for you, but I'll show you a better way to kind of navigate this. What this is, is just showing you other keywords similar to this. So kid's pottery wheel kit for beginners, all that good stuff right here. So we go back to black box, hit dashboard right here. Let's go all the way down and let's use that magnet keyword tool. Okay, so if we go over here, uh, this is on Canada. Let's go to .com here and let's paste kids pottery wheel. And I'll show you exactly how to use this tool to get even more ideas to find little niches, uh, things people are searching into Amazon, everything like that. So we go over here. The two things you're going to worry about is search volume. Again, I want it 500 to 4,000, somewhere in that range right here. Word count three. Then we go over here and hit apply filters as I scroll down. And if we go down here, all these keywords popped up because they're related to what we just typed in. So we can see right here, search volume, all right? So we see how many searches per month 
what's going on with all these keywords. So we can see real-time demand, right? So if people are searching this on Amazon, these keywords, that means there's demand for these keywords, okay? So we can go into those, those niches, figure out there's, you know, lacking supply or a lacking product that we could potentially you know, weasel our way. And I hate seeing that term weasel, but just carve our little, little niche in there, right? Carve our little product into that little niche there. So we see kids pottery wheel kit, pottery kit for kids. The best way I like to do this is sort by magnet IQ score. So Helium 10 will do the work for you. And they pretty much just tell you like, what's the best opportunity based on search volume and the number of competition in that area. So we see mini pottery wheel. So we go over here. Is there a mini one? Do they advertise mini ones? So we see mini one right here, 220 reviews. That's not bad. Uh, four stars here. So we see 3.8 out of five. So that's an opportunity right there. If we make a better one of these, we can come in and take over this market, right? So same thing here, mini one, we see different designs, which is interesting. So maybe we come out with a really cool design, but to me right there, these are higher price, which is fantastic. Uh, and we have a little you know, kit you can make with it, but the fact that it's such a low review rating tells me there's opportunity here. So this is kind of what we're looking for, right? This is, again, I know I'm not going crazy down the rabbit holes because it does take time. You're gonna have to come back over and over again, kind of figure out what's going on, make a giant list, figure out the pros and cons of all product ideas. But if we click into here, I wanna show you one last thing here. So we scroll down the page here, we're gonna grab what's called the ASIN. So Amazon standard identification number. What this is essentially is just so Amazon knows what, what product is what. If we go down here to product information, we can grab the ASIN right here. So this is what Amazon uses again to understand what products are what products, okay? We go back to Helium 10, go back to the dashboard here, go all the way down to Cerebro right here. What this is gonna do, it's gonna take this ASIN, so we just plug that in here, paste it in here, hit get keywords, okay? And if you guys are liking this so far, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below. I have so many product research videos and I make so many all the time. So if you wanna keep up to date, get more information, have me go deeper into product research itself and everything else Amazon FBA related, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below, that little notifications bell. So with this plugged in and we hit get keywords here, we see Amazon has pulled up all the keywords that this product we just took the ASIN for is ranking for. So we can get even more keyword ideas that are similar to this product right here, okay? So this is another great way to go through here. As we see, we have 1300 keywords, so there's no lack of ideas. We can see the data for this, you know, 3000 searches here, uh, you know, 200, 660. And obviously we click search volume here, we can sort by that. Uh, obviously the more single words here, the more competitive they're gonna be. So we can actually go back up to here, uh, hit word count and go three. So we can get rid of all those single words. And then we see air dry clay. So I've never heard that word ever spoke in my life before. So we can click here and figure out what the heck this product is. That's the beautiful thing about Amazon is there's so many products you just never knew existed. Okay, and Helium 10 allows you to sort through all this. And I wanted you to understand how to use all these tools. So hopefully that was helpful guys. Again, this was not meant to be an advanced tutorial by any means. This was meant to just get a overview of how all these tools work, how you can get started. Again, I'm a big believer that if you try to learn everything right away, you're gonna get overwhelmed and you're not gonna take any action at all. That's not how this works. Okay. This is something you're just going to have to, you know, dive into just action, right? Action, action, action. You learn by doing things. You don't learn by, you know, just, you know, reading things. Yes, you learn a little bit, but if you don't actually apply what you learn, apply what you watch, then you're never going to move forward. You're never going to learn the little tricks and tips that you kind of get by experience, right? Like that's, that's for everything. I think it's like, you remember like 10 to 20% of what you read, but if you actually do the things, you learn up to 80%, like you retain 80% like that. Don't quote me on that. I'm no mathematician, but even if I'm off on numbers a little bit there, I know it's true just from my own personal experience that you have to do, do, do. All right, guys, hope this was helpful. Again, hit up my channel for more product research videos. You can type in Cameron James, Amazon FBA product research, and make sure you guys subscribe if you haven't already to get alerts when I do make more videos. Of course, we need Helium 10. Might as well get a discount. Link will be in the description down below for you to take advantage of. All right, guys, hopefully this is helpful. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.